Hello and welcome to uh, the first of our Ask Joe webinars. Uh, my name is Joe Binder. I appreciate you taking the time. And we are here today with Joe Sass, who is the channel manager. The uh, uh, He's going to be working the channel development manager. He's working primarily and doing a lot of teaching and, and uh, learning people on the uh, Spectra Precision Geospatial Line. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe. And any Thank questions, you, I will be monitoring questions. Thank you. Yes, please uh, insert any questions you have in the chat window, and either Joe or Joe will answer that. So thank you all for coming. Uh, today's session is just surrounding the coding and line work portion of Survey Pro. Um, the intent is not to teach you how to do Survey Pro, but instead uh, open up uh, the possibilities of coding and, and some smart line work commands uh, that are available inside Survey Pro. So here we go. Ah, here we went. So, just an example, right and left. Um, Survey Pro does have the ability to bring in AutoCAD files, and that's what you're seeing on the left. And on the right, you're seeing line work that was generated through smart coding, um, as well as an alignment there. Survey Pro is using, let me turn off my camera, probably very just. Um, Survey Pro uses the Trimble FXL feature definition uh, schema for the coding. So this is common, common platform between Survey Office, Trimble Business Center, uh, Trimble Access, and Survey Pro. And um, the coding is controlled through the Feature Definition Manager, which is a PC-based software uh, that can be installed as a standalone utility, or it can be, um, it's automatically installed when you install Trimble Business Center or Survey Office. What you're seeing up here are the line commands. They're in the lower right-hand uh, corner of the capture there, and we'll get into that a little bit. So the FXLs uh, can create points, lines, and polygons. So the points can be feature coded, for instance, FH for fire hydrant, um, and lines and polygons uh, can be created through the coding uh, polygons can be created through a close command, for instance. Features and attributes. Um, so the feature would be fire hydrant, and the attribute would be condition of the fire hydrant, the brand of the fire hydrant, the last time it was serviced, et cetera. And then the, the attributes, features and attributes are, are controlled by layers. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there are like nine or 10 control codes that, that uh, actually generate the line work in a smart way. Here you can see the code edge of pavement as defined in feature definition manager, uh, display properties, uh, the actual iconology of the line or the icon itself can be controlled here. Uh, icons can be imported, they can be scaled, uh, you can define line styles, all of this through um, the feature definition manager. Inside Survey Pro, you are given the choice to assign codes or assign descriptions. And, and that's a very important differentiation. Descriptions are text files, you know, um, FH space fire hydrant. And you just have a list of these codes that are in a text format. And that's a very common method that goes way back in, in our industry. The coding though is, is actually the FXL schema. And this is where we define what feature uh, definition file we will use. The Survey Pro comes with two pre-installed FXL files that satisfy most needs. Uh, Sample.fxl and global.fxl. I think global.fxl is the newer definition, and it has I don't know, several hundred codes with features and, and iconology associated with that. Some people want to. So the reason we we make you choose between features, uh, between descriptions and codes. Codes are binary. And if you're expecting features in, a, in an ASCII format or a text format and you enter it as a code, you're going to be disappointed when you export because you won't get that text file. Uh, so by forcing code or description, you are going to get that fifth column, point number, northing, easting, hiding, and then it's either going to be a description or it's going to be a code. If you want both, uh, you can set up Survey Pro to actually prompt you uh, 
or descriptions or prompt you for codes after the shot has been taken. Prompts always occur after an observation. You can see there are five prompts listed here, and each one of these would be asked of the user after an observation is made. This is uh, true for both total station measurements and GNSS. See, I have a spelling error. I need to make a note and come back and get that. So here we're displaying four different lines. Uh, one is a TC top of curb, another one is an FL flow line, another one is EP edge of pavement. I'm not sure what this outline is. Uh, and the one that I've highlighted that I've actually clicked on is the um, is this FL, the flow line, which I've, I've bolded in blue. The display properties of this um, line, of these lines, are also controlled by the feature definition manager. Uh, and if you're running Survey Pro on a PC and you make editing changes to the FXL file that's being used in your current job, simply exiting out of Survey Pro and re entering Survey Pro will actuate those changes and you'll be able to see them uh, live. Here you can see that the, the uh, we had edge of pavement, I'm sorry, flow line up there, and I've now defined the color as green. And so when I come back into Survey Pro, after exiting and re-entering the program, it's updated that uh, previously blue line to now a green line. Weighting can also be controlled. There are a number of line control codes that are part of Survey Pro. These are not features, they are not attributes, but they, well, they are attributes. They are attributes of a line. And I don't need to read these for you. Um, I will show by example what these various commands do. There's also a few more that I have not included on this page, which you have a minute to look at that. All of these definitions are available in the help menu, which is live inside of Survey Pro. I'll probably mention it later, um, but the smooth curve and the end smooth curve, these are not, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. These are not rendered inside Survey Pro. Uh, Survey Pro does not have the ability to create a spline, but the commands are still valid. And even though you will get hard corners uh, as the points are connected, when you render this inside Survey Office or you render this inside the Trimble Business Center, you will get the best fit splined curve uh, by using these commands. So what I've done here is very repetitive, but I think it, it serves my point of showing you what the various codes do. So here we have seven points, two through eight, and none of them all have point codes. So Survey Pro inside the map page, uh, which is what you're looking at there, just simply shows the point and the point number. If I stick point codes like wa uh, water valve or nail, uh, these are not only assigned the point code itself, but they are also assigned to a code layer. And a code layer is different from a point layer. So we have two different layerings going on inside Survey Pro, one related to codes and one related to points. You can see here on point number three, I've got two codes. So Survey Pro is perfectly happy to allow you to assign multiple codes to a single point. Here, I've assigned the command FL for flow line uh, to points two through seven. And it's pretty obvious what, what happens. Point number five is not only part of the flow line, but it goes over a nail. So Survey Pro allows both line and, and point codes on a point. And here, what I've said is, is on point number two, start a tangential arc. Well, a tangential arc requires an incoming tangent segment, and there is none. So Survey Pro doesn't know what to do and does nothing because it's an invalid command. However, if I move that command to point number three, you can see that Survey Pro then creates a best fit arc 
between points number three and four. And it uses this tangent to define the beginning of this curve. So it's a start tangential arc, and this is between points two and three is the tangent segment. So here, start tangential arc, but it's actually taking this point between three and four and giving me the best fit arc here. It can't do two of them. So you would expect it to come like this maybe and out, but Survey Pro doesn't manage it like that. I would have to, um, I'd have to do something else if I wanted two arcs there. So you can see there's no difference between these two commands. So if you have commanded Survey Pro to do something it doesn't understand, it will likely just ignore it. Here we've got two star tangential arcs. This one is defined by the tangent piece two to three. And this one is defined as the tangent piece between four and five, connecting points five and six. Here we've got an invalid command, in tangential arc. Well, there is no tangent piece here, right? There's a water line, but none, there, there is no incoming tangent piece to end. So if I adjust that a little bit and lower that, then you can see that I've got a tangent piece between four, three and four that helps me define the arc between two and three. Here I've got two tangential arcs, n tangential arcs. So here's my tangent piece between two and three, creating the arc between two and uh, tangent between three and four, creating the arc between two and three, and the tangent between five and six, creating the arc between four and five. So I don't need to do the start and end commands unless I want to be very intentional about my line. So you can see here, I started on point number two and ended on point number four intentionally. And by doing this then, I don't have to connect points four and five and they are autonomous independent lines. Notice here, I didn't use the start and end commands. I used just, lines one and two. So this is very effective method if I'm doing cross sections, right? I can have flow line on one side of the street and flow line on the other, and I just call one FL1 and the other side I call FL2, and et cetera, et cetera, with top of curb, back of curb, edge of pavement, um, et cetera. I can just use one and two and three and four, and that will then automatically uh, make these lines autonomous versus using the start and end command, which might be a little bit more, um, uh, require a little bit more thought and attention to that point. So here we've got a start non-tangential arc and end a non-tangential arc. And so what we do is we find the best fit curve through these three points by doing this. Finds the curve that goes right through point number four because it's on that line. And this is where I'm going to end it is on point number five. You notice that neither of these are tangent to the segment before or after them. So in this example, five and six are disregarded because Survey Pro can't solve that. Right? So it's a start non-tangential arc and end non-tangential arc. Because we've got two points in there, there is no solution. It could either go through point number five, and point number six really does not have a solution, right? Because it's on the other side. So Survey Pro, again, just disregards these commands because they don't make mathematical sense. Here, we're just having one point in between the start non tangential arc and the end non tangential arc we then get the proper connection of, point of the arc going through point number five.
you can see the difference in the commands. If we take the, uh, the uh, command off of point number six and just move it to point number seven, we remove all codes from point number six. And by the way, I, I did these examples using the point editor inside Survey Pro. Right? I didn't have to go out there and shoot these multiple times to make this example. Um, I took the points once, and then I was able to go into the point editor of Survey Pro and just change the, the codes, and it would re-render this line work for me. So here we've got point number three coded as part of this line, but we've also said just ignore it. Do not join. That's what the IG is, ignore. And so here, even though it's got the code, it's not a part of the line. And you can see the nomenclature here. Inside Survey Pro, I could type this in, WLK space IG, or there is a menu-driven uh, selection process. Instead of ignore point, this is join point, right? So it allows me to join point number eight to this existing line, even though it's not uh, sequential. Joe, when you're doing that shot, since you're prompted after that, and you're actually record, uh, observing point number four, when you observe point number eight, do you need to give it any code at all? I see you have it blank. Uh, I'm sorry, Joe, I missed, I, I don't think I understood the question. You can see here that on point number four, I coded it to join it with point number eight. So here's the nomenclature, WLK space JPT space eight. And so inside the menu driven portion, yes. So there's nothing that I need to do to point eight on that one. Point eight, as you can see, is not coded WLK, but I still want to join it to point number four. If I had made this also WLK, I would have had to do a couple of things. Number one, by default, then it would have connected WLK7 to WLK8, right? So I would have to be very explicit. I might call this then WLK2 and then have it join point number eight. Um, I, have, I, I would run the risk of closing this polygon otherwise. Or I could do the ignore point command, ignore command, right? This one here where it won't join, and so then I could do that on point number seven. I could say IG, right? A couple of different ways to manage this. This doesn't come up very often, but it is very manipulatable, if that's a word. Here you can see that using the CL, the close line command, I'm able to create a true polygon. This is a rather recent meaning last couple of years enhancement to Survey Pro. Survey Pro used to allow you to close these points, but it did not create true polygons. And today we are fully up to date with the Trimble FXL schema, which then allows us to do both the splined uh, best fit curves and these polygons, which we were not able to do before. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a start smooth curve and an end smooth curve command. And so we're asking Survey Pro to find the best sequence of splines to fit through all of these points. This is the way Survey Pro renders it. And, and yet that's not an accurate presentation of what it would look like uh, inside Survey Pro, uh, inside Survey Office or Trimble Business Center. But the, the commands are valid. We can have it automatically create rectangles between two points for us. And this is how it would work. Start rectangle, so it'll go from point three to point four, and it'll be 1.5 units, whether those are feet or meters, and it's going to be to the left or right, depending upon if this is a plus or minus. So here you've got the rendering. The point goes from three to four, and if you look at the direction you would be standing, if you were standing on point number three, looking at point number four, and this is misleading, by the way. So let me explain this screen. Point number three and point number four are the ones that are lower in that rectangle. 
dollar sign three underscore one and dollar sign dollar sign four underscore one are temporary points that are created by Survey Pro to create this rectangle. And the fact that if I were standing on point number three, looking at point number four, that direction of the rectangle is, is minus on the number line, which is, matches what you see in my table there. It's a minus 1.5, in this case, feet offset. Start rectangle minus, start rectangle plus, what does that do? So when we get these temporary points, Survey Pro, if, if the, and when I say temporary points, the dollar sign, I can right mouse click on those, which is an extended keystroke in this, in this map page inside Survey Pro, and I can select create point. And by creating point, it will take the, the northing and easting of dollar sign five underscore one, and I can now put that into my point file of the job. If I don't do that and I exit this page, those points disappear. In fact, if I went down underneath the snaps option, there's an erase icon and I could just erase these temporary points. So I have to be intentional about saving them into my job file if they are interesting to me. So here you can see I saved those points and they no longer have a dollar sign next to them. And I could have renamed them anything else I wanted if I, if I had so desired. So here, we've got a center point and a perimeter point. So point number three, and then it's going to select the next point in the file, point number four, it assumes will be the perimeter point. Make sure I got this right. Center point and a point on the, yeah, point on. So it assumes this next point will be the perimeter point. And yet this one is defined by a radius distance. So it's a circle defined by a radius. The radius here is one, one foot in this example uh, from point four, it creates a, a circle. So here again, you can see that point number five is the center point. Point number six is on the radius. It creates the radius. And even though it comes very close to point seven, eight, and four, number six, the point immediately after point number five defines the, the radius of that circle. It could be very handy, I think, in some cases to actually plot that out. So here is defining the circle by the intersection, the arc created or the, the circle created going through points three, four, and five. Between four, five, and six. So here, Supposed to have three on the circle, but there aren't enough points. So Survey Pro again just ignores this command because it can't do it. If I had put number eight with the code BA, then the command would have actually drawn the circle. Maybe I show you that. You can also do offsets. So here we've got a horizontal offset of two units on point number three, going down to a horizontal offset of one unit on point number four. And this can clearly be seen here in the rendering of Survey Pro. That's a horizontal offset. And here you can see it can be varying lengths and you can have it continuous. So here, understand that this is a horizontal offset. 
but then I can also do a vertical offset. That gets me an elevated alignment, uh, but understand that the vertical component is, is theoretically standing right over my original line, and the horizontal alignment is offset the correct amount of distance from the original line. You just need to be careful when you're elevating this that the elevation is tied to the horizontal position. Here we've defined a polygon just by four points. Five points. Building is already a polygon, which is why I don't need to connect the points. I don't need to have a, a close command on these because they are already polygon uh, features. Remember, the, a feature can be a point, a line, or a polygon. And because building is polygon, allows me to just say which points are included and which ones are not. Polygons can have arcs in them, as you see here. So here's a tangential arc. Not common, but it's possible. Another one. Here I've got point number five coded as building. So it's in, it's part of the polygon, but I've also said ignored. I don't want a line drawn here. It's just part of the building. Maybe it's an important part of my, my foot, footprint of the building. Uh, so it's part of it, but it's not part of the line. So we're running very early here. You never know how long these things are going to take when you do these. Here you can see a, a job that has been surveyed in Survey, off, in Survey Pro out in the field. It's done with the total station. There's a variety of points and a variety of lines. There's an alignment in there. You can see where the total station was set up down here and the backside was somewhere down here. So importing this in the survey office will not generate these lines until I say process feature codes. And in order to process the feature codes, I need to have that FXL file that I used in the field inside survey office. So when I import this job Belago underscore line work, and I use this import, you know, the, the typical import of, of Survey Office. Survey Office knows to, to drag that sample.fxl file with it. Um, if for some reason that file is not in the same folder as the job file, it won't get it. And then you can manually import that FXL file. And then again, in order to generate the line work, this button needs to be pressed, and it will then draw out the line work exactly as you saw it in the field. So we've got a lot of time. Um, I thank you guys very much. That really is a, is a uh, 20,000 foot view of Survey Pro coding. I hope it answers um, any questions you might have had, but if there are questions that are still unanswered, now would be a good time to pose them. Joe, we do have one question here that, uh, what is the difference between groups and categories in the FXL? I don't know. I, uh, I, I, under, I, I would like to understand that as well. I think that's just another tool for layering your, your, your uh, codes, right? You've got code layers, you've got categories, you've got groups, you've got uh, commands. If we take a look at Feature Definition Manager, How do I get this down where I can? I'm going to have to hide my toolbar that I can then access this and pull it. Oh, pull it down where we can see it and use it. Okay, so here, as they were saying, here are groups. And yet within the groups, I think if you pull out one of the codes from landscaping, for instance, you'll find it up here under landscape, right? So groups are uh, one method, 
for controlling how these are layered. And then as we also saw within here, we also have, um, it shows group and layer, and those are not always the same, I believe. So here you see this is a group of roads, and this is a group of rest of the world structures, right? Group is roads, the layer is roadway. So again, I think this is just a layering tool so that you can control and whatever, I think that this the software allows you to control it however you like in that way. And I think that many times people are trying to match an existing workflow that uses certain words. And again, allowing these options allows us to fit into more offices and their, and their existing workflows. More? Any other questions from anyone out there? We've got uh, a couple of people giving some feedback, which is all uh, good to have. Appreciate that. So my intent with these is to convey information, not to fill an hour. If, if, if my presentations run over next time, then we'll just count it good that we got done early today. Um, but I want to thank you guys very much for attending and um, look forward to meeting with you guys next Thursday. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all. Appreciate your time today and have a great rest of the day and a good weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you.